Hello, host Eric. We're talking with famous people here. How are you guys doing? <laughs> oh, man. That's perfect timing. Hi. Oh, I'm, really? <laughs> I'm host Eric. I'm talking about Vegetable. I'm here with Finney Deluxe. He and I had an interesting conversation uh, maybe a week ago. And mm -hmm. uh, unfortunately, I failed to record it correctly. So I got only audio from his end none of what I was saying came through and basically rendered video not very useful so uh, he suggested we try again tonight and I think it's a good idea because some of the topics we covered last time that I found myself to be uh, for further thought in me as well uh, as likely to be interesting to viewers had a lot to do with third slot FE versus third slot T, uh, obviously the sort of lower hanging fruit that tends to get talked about more with ENFPs and ENTPs is the difference between the tool and polar, you know, the FI and TI. But it, it was informative, I think, to highlight some of the... Sorry, Katie, sorry, sorry. You have a little thing I wanted to pull off of you. She has a little, little bunch of hairs that are, like, stuck together. I want to try to like pull that stick, sticky part off, but it pulls her hair. She got not like it. Anyway, um, so why don't you? Why don't we start by by? Let me ask you to answer the question. What's your experience of third slot TE? If you were going to describe it to somebody who was more or less familiar with functions, but one clarity about how third slot TE looked. What would you tell them? Oh, okay. Um, I mean, I'm I'm still working with myself, but um, what I like, I remember like last time, we, like in the last video when we were talking, you mentioned that ENFPs a lot of times due to third slot TE, they feel responsible for how other people do shit, and I think I think that's also the reason why ENFPs can be such great teachers because I, like sometimes I'm just like adjusting certain behaviors of people but like in the most non-intrusive way possible does that make sense mm -hmm. that, that, that could be one thing and obviously it helps like sometimes I feel like TE is like like the racing horse for my FI so my FI is like I want this and like how can I get this you know like I feel like having whatever I want and is like okay how can i get it in like the most in the quickest and um mm -hmm. least uh annoying way possible <laughs> yeah so, so you, I, you're, i'm getting your experience is similar to mine which is regarding the idea of following through on shit the more the more fully laid out ahead of me in terms of details a given plan of action is and the more involved that detailed plan of action is, the less likely I am to follow through on. on exactly, exactly, exactly. I mean, it, or it has to be something I'm really, really, really passionate about. Otherwise, I usually have just like some, let's say, like some like cornerstones, like some milestones of uh, how to progress with a certain situation. But other than that, it's just like up in the air how I'm going to proceed, you know? So, I mean, I think the takeaway from this is that the the any dom's novelty frame impacts us similarly regarding TE in the sense that there's some hesitation to get married to any ordinality plan, like first this, then this, then that, then this, then that, we, we, we both have a hesitation to get married to it, that sort of thing, because it denies us the opportunity to ideate on the fly or to, you know, basically define our frame and our experience and shit as we want as we go along. Exactly. It, it can't be too rigid. I mean, I can have, like, let's say a rigid system in place, but within that system, there's still some space for my NE to shine, you know? I mean, it might be more effective sometimes for it to not give us space, but I think the problem is then we lose any motivation to engage in that system. Exactly. Because the extroverted intuition acts like an implicit value. 
like you know the, the problem I have often had with my TE which is I'm sure worse than yours um, is that I don't uh, I don't tend to think about actual efficiency very much like for example when I do doing with a doing work with a drill and screws and and stuff like that and drill bits like if I'm if I'm repairing something or building something I will use what's bad TE ultimately though it might seem like good TE at the time I'll go well I don't I don't want to go buy screws I'll just find some screws here that will work and I'll use a mishmash of different screws with different heads on them and stuff but then like and then after I'm done with it I realize oh fuck I need to take this thing apart because I needed to put that thing in there and then as I go to take it apart because I of course you know failed to do the TE properly in the first place um, I realized I have to change dr drive bits for like every single different screw's got a different drive bit in it, and then I have to look for the bit. And how much less efficient is that ultimately? It's vastly less efficient, even though it seems like I'm preserving resources or something by scrounging up old screws to use. Yeah, um, I think uh, for ENFPs especially, it's uh, like the TE part. It isn't only TE; it's also FI and SI in the mix. So. It's not only what is the most efficient way, but it's also what is the most efficient way that doesn't annoy me. You know, that's really important. <laughs> so sometimes I may do something that isn't as efficient, but still um, considers my FI. You know, my FI has to be considered. Otherwise, I yeah, I'm not going. I'm going. I'm not going to do it. Or my SI for that matter. Well, I try to do. I try to remember to consider my SI. It, when I was younger, I used to have a problem of. Um, being like, I'm sure I'll be fine. <laughs> it's gonna be cold. You should, don't, don't you want to bring a jacket, Eric? I'm sure I'll be fine. <laughs> and then, but you only have to have a couple of those experiences where you're freezing fucking cold, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. before you start doing at least some effort to remembering to bring a jacket. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I mean, the jacket part doesn't apply to me. I'm very, very sensitive to the cold. It, as soon as it's just like a little bit cold, I have like a thick jacket. Like, I mean, it's not that cold right now. And I have my, I, I almost always, or a lot of times I have like a hat on or something, or like a beanie. So I'm really cold sensitive, but it applies to other areas like sleep deprivation or like hunger. Like I'm, my ability to like, like postpone uh, eating is unmatched. It's really unmatched. I don't know why. Like I can eat cold food. I don't. I don't. I don't care. I, and I don't know if I'm hungry or if I'm thirsty until I've actually like until I start drinking a lot of times, you know. And then I just notice, oh fuck, what did I do to my body? So <laughs> yeah. Well, um, the thing is, one thing that happens as you get older is your day gets compressed, like. Mm -hmm. When you're younger, a full day, it doesn't feel really like a unit of time. It feels like a bunch of of stretches of of fairly long time, you know? Exactly. <laughs> when, you get older, I, I you start, when you get older, you start to be like, okay, look. Remember, Eric, you should eat now because there's this afternoon. And this afternoon... It's shorter than you think it is. It's only a few brief hours, and it's going to be over before you know it. You need to eat now. There's not going to be time to somehow magically, oh, I'm sure I'll find a moment to get a bite someplace, somewhere. No, it doesn't work like that, Eric. Remember, if you don't eat now, you're not going to eat. You're going to feel shitty as fuck in three hours. That's something that has been a hard-learned lesson, gradually, slowly learned over years. I still fuck it up sometimes. The challenge of being fourth slot SI. Yeah. Uh, can you give me just like one second? I think the bell rang and I think I have a package to do. Okay, cool. You take a second, I'll go to the store. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm going to sit inside and smoke too, but I want to at least open the door. Yeah, yeah. Okay. 
Sorry, dude. Ja, alles gut. Alles gut. Okay. <lacht> I got a package. I got a package. Woo. I, did, I even forgot what I ordered, actually. I actually forgot what I ordered. But I'll look later. Um, okay. So where were we? Um, yeah, I have one question. Like, what, how... I mean, yeah, it's technically about ENFPs and ENTPs, but how, I mean, you, you, you told me that FE, like people who have FE third, they feel responsible for how other people feel. But, but what function, or like what, uh, like does TI third mean that uh, like INFJs, for example, they feel responsible for how other people think? Like which function or which stack feels yeah. responsible for how other well, people I mean, think? look, it's like, um... For TI third, it would be they feel responsible to justify themselves universally, communicatively. Oh yeah, that makes that makes sense. That makes a lot of sense. Um, FE third is like uh, I feel I need to justify myself externally, illogically, and what. Okay. And to say I'm justified illogically means your feelings aren't hurt. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think well of you, Eric. <laughs> <laughs> I, wasn't, I wasn't specifically re talking about you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh. oh man, you know, you know. Sometimes, sometimes I have like this kind of dream. Have Have you seen Avengers? Or do you know like a little bit about Avengers? You know, like that's like Captain America or like Iron Man. He and he says like Avengers assemble, and I have the same thing for like like an E dorms or like perceivers. I'm just like standing like in the middle of like an empty street, and I'm just like an E dorms assemble. <laughs> and then like all the E dorms just they just come like flooding in, and we like all dance, and it's all fun. That's how I <laughs> that's how I imagine heaven, kind of. <laughs> just like. <laughs> Can you? <laughs> yeah, that'd be, it would be an interesting conference. Um, I wonder what would happen if you got a conference of 100 any dogs, verified, oh, yeah. all verified by me and and other people that I think are are reliable about the thing. Okay, so all you get 50 ENTPs and 50 ENFPs. Mm -hmm. Ideally, you get 25 ENTP chicks, 25 ENTP dudes, 25 ENFP chicks, 25 ENFP dudes. Okay. Mm -hmm. And you put them in the conference, and, and you know you give like a short presentation or something, forty-five minute long presentation with a PowerPoint. And then this is, but the real point of the conference is to to gather data to watch from the wings at the after party. So you know after the presentation about something dull, you know, you okay, yeah, <laughs> true. No. And uh, this is like you, you got forty-five minutes of any dumps getting increasingly squirmy. Probably the ENTPs have started like. Shouting shit out by the end. <laughs> I mean, that's actually a good way to turn up the craziness, like over nine thousand. You know, right. I think I think the after party would be it would be crazy in like all directions, positive <laughs> and negative. Like the world would just like implode or explode. I don't know what would happen, but it would be crazy. I mean, the thing is, the, the key thing in the conference would have, it have to be extremely SI heavy. It's the only way you could be guaranteed to. To hit the hit the negative hit negative ground for both types, you have yeah. to be like, okay, remember the important thing is precision and recalling the exact <laughs> details that we've laid out here, and also to please I need everybody to sit up and still remain. I need good posture. I need stillness, and uh, please stop bouncing any knees, moving around. I just we need a really quiet, still environment. I want everyone to pay attention to breathing and then concurrently remember all of these details. Okay, so first, remember when we're separating out the trashes, there are seven different kinds of trash, all right? We need to recall each of these. And they are uh, organic waste and just like 45 minutes of this, okay? <laughs> with, con with constant reminders to be still <laughs> and not move. And not say anything. <laughs> mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And instead of saying anything, you need to be spending all of your time 
remembering all these details. Go over it again and again in your head. Just repeat it to yourself a few more times. Now let's have a group repetition exercise. We're going to repeat these six words six times, and then we're going to repeat them back again six more times. <laughs> Oh my God! Oh my God! That that would be that would be I don't know I don't know that yeah just just no just no. And, and with all the HPs for sure would be like oh this is the longest forty five minutes ever oh yeah 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 that would be that would be quite antsy. I mean we all would be like all the Edoms would be antsy in that situation. So okay, so then finally it's getting so antsy. The, the presenter goes. Okay, as you can see on our schedule, it is now time for a break, and I believe it is cocktail hour. So uh, please help yourselves. It's open bar. Uh, it'll be running for the next two hours, and uh, after that, we do plan to come back here and have another session of the conference. <laughs> there would be no coming back. There would be no coming back. Like by that time, like. <laughs> of course not. Of course, but that's what the guy says. Okay, that's what the presenter says in this experiment here. Yeah, is yeah, he? Yeah, yeah. He tells all the any dogs they're gonna have a two-hour drinking session and then come back for more conference. <laughs> oh, oh God! Oh God! Oh God! And then there's an open bar <laughs> <laughs> and a DJ. You know? Yeah, yeah, man, yeah, man. <laughs> oh, man. So, um, yeah. anyway, what I suspect would happen is if you let it go on long enough, that the ENFPs and ESPs would start to settle like salad dressing into two separate groups. You think so? I think so. If you let it go yeah. on long enough. Because gradually, they'd get into fights with each other. Uh-huh, yeah. And I mean, yeah, the IFI is a bitch, so... It would have to be it would have to be a party that went on for days and days and days to witness it, you know? So... Yeah. The, conference, the guy said, listen, basically, you can't go home until we have the other half of our conference. You guys didn't show up yesterday after, after the two-hour cocktail hour. So, listen, we're beginning this morning with brunch cocktails... And I expect you all to be <laughs> the after the conference. What? If you oh god, if you if you begin it with the with like like yeah, okay, okay. Um uh, re regarding uh, have you seen the Joker? No. Like it sounds oh depressing. It sounds depressing. have you seen the have you seen the old joke? Like have you seen Batman? I think the like the, the Joker of uh, Heath Ledger, Heath Ledger's Joker? Mm. Please tell me yes. Am I which what movie was it in? I think it was it was uh I think it was uh, the second Batman movie with uh Christian Bale, like Batman The Dark Knight Rises? Yeah, the Dark Knight Rises, I think. Mm. I haven't seen it because like it's really like I think it's a really beautiful depiction of ENTP and ENFP, you know, since the Joker embodies chaos, and I think we are like one of the most fitting types to uh, embody it. Um uh, yeah, I mean, like the old Joker, he's let just Joker. He's like an ENTP, and the new Joker is uh, an ENFP. You know, and it's really, I think it's really beautifully done in both cases because, like, the new Joker, he says, like, essentially, I just want to feel good. That's essentially what it's what it's all about. Like all the antics and whatever's happening is just about him feeling good. And the old Joker, he's more like it's not. It's never about him. You know, he never talks about like himself and how he feels. He's just about like these are the values of society. And they are at least questionable. And that's why I'm doing what I'm doing. And yeah, if you have the time, you should check it out. Maybe I'm going to do a video about it, analyzing it, but I don't know. <laughs> mm, interesting. Interesting uh, that I guess, I guess the character gets written differently by different sets of writers, you know? Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Let me close this door. It's really cold. Okay, that's a little bit better. Um, so, what's another ENFP, ENTP distinction that is either something we talked about last time or 
could talk about this time that uh, might render um, fertile ground for discussion? Huh, good question. I mean, yeah, mostly like, obviously, most uh, things that, that I can come up, come up with are usually TI, FE related for ENTPs or TEFI related for ENFPs. What I've noticed is uh, that um, the, the FE of um, ENTPs can be really good, like better than most, at least consciously, than most ENFPs. I have like one friend, he's like a tutor, tutor, and obviously, I mean, he had years of practicing now, but like his, his FE is quite well established, you know, he makes me feel good and he has like uh, good ways uh, to explain it, Yeah, or let's say. Um, I think third slot is definitely, I mean, the thing is when people develop third slot in a real way, people develop the sixth slot in a utilitarian way. So it's like with your sixth slot function, good enough is always good enough. And with your third, yeah. slot, with your third slot function, you're aspirational in it in some sense. You, you know, good enough is good enough maybe, but you'd like to be even better. <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah th that's true for my fe usually usually i just dis disrespect fe every chance I, every chance i get i mean it's not like or a lot of times a lot of, like i mean i'm an enfp and i would say i'm socially aware but i still have a lot of like i'm still prone to a lot of social faux pas but i would say i don't know if other enfps agree but let's say like 80 to 90% of all social faux pas that happen are not, are not, let's say not unwillingly, but it's just like my FI recognizes it, recognizes it, but it's just like, yeah, fuck off. I don't care about FE reasons, just like, like I care about how I feel. <laughs> um, I, I had an experience yesterday morning. Yeah, I guess it was yesterday morning. Um, that I think is revelatory about the different modalities of dealing with shit. Like, for example, this is what happened. I, I was supposed to meet my dad in Palm Desert for breakfast. I was on my way back from Tucson. Palm Desert is between Tucson and my house. And my dad was down in Palm Desert for a couple of days vacation, but he just decided to go down there by himself. So um, I drove into Palm Desert around six in the morning and I realized that I didn't know where he was staying. I knew he was staying at either the place that he sometimes stays at, which is called uh, Desert Villa Springs, or the other place, which the name of which I couldn't remember. So I knew he was at one of these two places. Now, it's also, it's too early to call him because if I call him right now, it's going to wake him up. So, what what do I have to do here? Now, I didn't even really think about it, about what to do. I just drove to the place that I remembered and figured I'd take it from there. That's an FE approach. I'm going to go in there and talk to the lady and see what she says. Now, a TE approach might go something like this. I'm going to check my email because I know... My dad often, T-E-S-I, my dad often sends me his itinerary even when I don't ask for it. So he might have done that this time too. Um, or a T-E approach might say, okay, well, let me look up properties similar to Desert Villa Springs, figure out what the name of the other place is, and call both places. Or better T-E would say, let me call the first place. And if, they, if he's not there, I will look up some places similar, and then I will figure out the name of the second place and call oh. the second place. Instead, what I did was I went to the first place, walked in, and said, I don't know if I'm in the right place, but my dad's staying here, or this other place maybe. It's like this place kind of, but it's not this place. And she's like, is it called Shadow Ridge? And I'm like, yes, thank you. Is, anyway, is he staying here? And she said, no, he's not staying here. And I said, okay, great. And then I went out and I went on my phone and just said directions to Shadow Ridge. And that was that. Um, your, your, <clears throat> your TE estimation was like really spot on. 
Like in my case, I would have probably looked up like both places and called and afterwards I probably would have called it quits or I don't know, maybe then I would have looked at other places, but places, but like my first, but my first impulse would have been, okay, figure out like both. I mean, you know, one place, figure out the other place, call both places and go from there. Right. There's, you know? there's, that didn't even really occur to me because I just... I just figured I, I I like to not I like to put off the TE as much as possible, mm -hmm. basically. Come on, value. So I'll, I'll just go there and talk to somebody and see <laughs> see what happens. Then hopefully that will make the TE moot. Yeah, yeah, that's what I uh, sometimes do too, though, because TE is still uh, quite taxing. So sometimes I'm just like, okay, just let me like ask that person. Maybe I'm. It depends on the amount of work that has to be involved. Obviously, you know. So if I have to like drive like to the hotel and it's like a little bit more far off, then I'm like, okay, fuck it, I I need to use TE. But if I'm but maybe I'm like 200 meters away or something, and I'm like, okay, let me just like go there and maybe I'm lucky and like things just work out and I don't have to use my brain. <laughs> <laughs> um, the uh, the other thing about it is is that. Um, of course, when asked by somebody else, like, how should I do this? I can articulate out a taxonomy of possible TE ways one might think about the thing, right? Mm -hmm. But it just never occurs to me to use that kind of thinking on my own problems. Um. Yeah, I have a, a question regarding that. I, I, like in one of your earlier videos, you said that ENFPs wouldn't use their problem solving mechanisms for other people. But like, I don't feel that's the case. I don't, I'm, I'm not, I'm not sure. But I think, I think I use my own experience kind of to give like that person a TE framing to be like, okay, that's what you should do. Or because in my experience, that's what helped me the most. I don't know. That's what I think. That's how ENFPs use their problem solving. Well, for. okay. Let me see. Let's see if we can figure out a, a corollary <laughs> here regarding the following, which is for my third slot FE, I sort of receive FE on one half of the thing. Mm -hmm. the, this that that feeling responsible for how other people feel thing. Is kind of the um, the implicit frame of that. If I'm going to if I'm going to feel satisfied by other people's expressions of positive feelings about me, then it requires me on some level to take ownership of their feelings when they have negative feelings that have been caused by me. Mm -hmm. um, so the TE corollary, I guess, would be. To feel satisfied at having figured things out in the external world requires you to externally want things to be figured out, I guess. And therefore, you, you, you when you see somebody not figuring something out, like, you know, it, it, like, um, like this. Ah, uh, now I now I get it. I think. But, 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 no, like like this. Like let's say you're. I'm sitting on a. I'm sitting on a bench, and you're watching me do this. It's like. Ah, uh, so so it has nothing to do with the person, but with my <laughs> internal judgment system, of like I regard it as something that needs to be figured out, but it has nothing to do with the person specifically. So if a person comes to me with a problem, which I don't uh, consider something to be figure it out i'm not going to figure it out <laughs> kind of like that no i guess what i'm saying is like i i <clears throat> that um <clears throat> in order to in order to, to 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 value so much other people's positive expressions of feelings about me i have mm -hmm. to falsely believe somehow that i cause other people's feelings mm-hmm so mm -hmm. the equivalent thing is, I guess, in order to value the TE solvency in your own life, 
I don't know. What's the equivalent? I can't. I'm, I'm maybe, struggling maybe, here. Maybe I feel responsible for all the things that aren't solved. Something like that. Unsolved Implicitly. problems. You feel responsible for unsolved problems. Like I feel responsible. Well, you mm -hmm. feel responsible for unsolved problems within your jurisdiction. Yeah, yeah. So, like, I don't feel responsible for Judy Smith's feelings, who I don't know. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I only feel responsible for her feelings if she's hanging out with my group, or you know, you know, it's like if in close-up proximity. Yes, yeah, proximity, and um, and mostly I feel responsible if she feels bad after or because of engaging with me. So there has to be some sort of causal relationship there. So mm -hmm. I guess what you, I guess the equivalent would be, you feel bad if you interfere with somebody else's solvency. <sighs> like, I'll have to think about that. I'll have to think about that. Like, and maybe observe it a little bit more. Like, if, <clears throat> you, if you were to advise me that the best way to get this cigarette into this box is to turn it upside down. Open it a little bit, <laughs> like this, and then slide it up here like this, like this, like this. And then I broke one or two of them, and you realize, oh, no, 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 never mind. You should do it like this. Turn it this way, and then put it in like this way. Um, presumably, you'd, you'd feel very bad for having misled me onto how to do something. I think I'd feel bad about that too, probably, if I miss that somebody. Else. Yeah, that's, that's what I was uh, thinking. I think it, uh, it seems like a human universal. That's why, I mean, a lot of times, like when you're in a conversation, you say something like, but I don't know, though, just to be safe, you know, but I don't think it's an ENFP thing specifically. It's just like, okay, maybe you should do this and this, but I don't know, though, just to, ha just to don't have any responsibility. But I'm definitely like, I don't know about the negative part, but I'm, pretty certain on the positive part that I'm like, I really like, I want to like help people solve problems and I feel good if I can help, if I get into that uh, teacher role. I really like that teacher role. Well, like I'm reactively providing TE. If somebody says like, hey, Eric, how do you do this? Um, mm -hmm. At the moment, I'll probably reactively be like, let me look at it, let me see. But um, at the end of the day, I don't feel responsible for figuring out for them. And if, mm -hmm. If I can't figure it out or it's a, it's annoying, I'll be like, I don't know, figure it out yourself. I, I can't figure this shit out either. Which is my way of saying, I don't want to figure this out. And um, and I don't feel responsible for figure, to figure it out. On the other hand, you would never hear me say that about somebody else's feelings like, um, are you feeling bad? Oh, well, how does this make you feel better? Oh, well, deal with it, your feelings. I, I, wouldn't, <laughs> I, wouldn't make, True. I wouldn't make a half-assed effort and then just say, well, not my problem. I just wouldn't yeah. do that with somebody else's FI. I definitely would with somebody else's TE. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, no, no, that, that makes a lot of sense, especially the TE thing. I don't know if I feel like 150% responsible for the solvency issue, but what I've noticed is that I want to at least come up, come up with like one plausible way of maybe fixing the problem or, or getting like in a better direction, you know? So I want to provide the person with at least like one useful you like, uh, tip. You like to give useful advice. Mm -hmm. See, I don't think I ever give anybody any, any unsolicited useful advice. Really. Like I don't say. Oh yeah, that, that can happen. To me. You know that can help happen. your channel. You know what would help your channel? I would never say that to anybody. Not and man. It's, and it's not because yeah. of of the fe reasons. Although I think there are good fe fe reasons not to say that. It's just because it wouldn't cross my mind because I'm not thinking about their channel. <laughs> yeah, that's what I thought about your channel, especially in the beginning. I, I thought like, I don't know, maybe, maybe, no offense, but I thought maybe the background could be a little bit prettier or something. I don't know, maybe fix up the audio, whatever, you know. I, I don't know. When, when is I think I started listening to you like about like three years ago, at least two years, at least two years now. Yeah. I'll put TE 
Uh, are you demanding something of me? Okay, fine. Here's TE. That's what you get if you demand something of me, is TE. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Especially, yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Especially FE with ENFPs, unless I'm like, let's say, unless unless it's like demanded in like some, let's say like a marriage or something. Like, let, let's say there's like a marriage going on. Yeah, then I'm going to be, let's say like I'm coming, like I'm presenting myself in a suit quite formally, whatever. But other than that, I'm usually just like, just like bubbly and ENFP and whatever, you know? Or if I'm like, yeah. SI users who are intuitives end up operating in the intuitive frame all the time, despite the fact that they're experiential knowers, which is basically being an Enneagram means being very good at taking a personal experience and linking it to a, an intuitive framework and NI truths underneath that framework. So like both you and I have a good a good awareness of when a given idea is more insightful or less insightful. In other words, when it pops more for us as explaining things and not mm -hmm. having heard before. We mm -hmm. have a clear understanding of when those things happen and the other times when it's not happening. And so um, that's, and the reason is because we extrapolate from our own experience throw it out there like, well, here's what my thing is. And you go, oh, here's the equivalent. Oh, so that is a dynamic of the relations between those two functions, like the third and sixth slot. It is a slot mechanics thing. It's basically what we're establishing here. Um, and uh, and it gets presented a lot of time as NI. Like, here's how slot mechanics are. I think ENTPs, like me, are well served if we can highlight the fact that this is really sourced from personal experience first. We like to present it as though it's universally sourced because mm -hmm. people respond better to that. Then you're going, but that's just your personal experience. Yeah. <laughs> I think, I think like sometimes, like sometimes, especially when I'm, let's say more disorganized, I, I wish like, oh man, why am I not like an ESTJ or whatever? But I think the part, like, I think an E is so powerful. It's so, so powerful. The ability to see patterns and, like, the same principle in, like, completely different situations. It's so helpful and so powerful. And I wish, like, every person could just experience it, like, for a day because it's really helpful. Even with TI stuff, I think, I, but I can't, I can't really put it into words, but a lot of times when I'm, like, confronted with, like, let's say, like, a or like logical problem i'm just like how can i say it i'm playing with like the intuitive waves and kind of yeah i'm trying to like link it to like maybe another situation or something it's, it's hard to explain i mean it's still hard i i really i think logic is still hard it's really hard especially like maths for me it's really hard because i can't rely on my fi so i only have maybe and and e mostly is also not helpful only later if I have enough SI experiences. So I only have T and SI to really rely on. But, but you know, here's where our any is the same kind of intuitive, and it's it's a good way maybe to draw have an example of something that's not TI or FI, but it's just NI NE, which is um, the the way that Cloud used the word intuitard in that last live stream. <laughs> and he, he used to kind of non-ironically, right? And so for me, that's is it was an absolutely delightful moment because I came up with the word intuitard as a word that an SE Dom character used to critique a bunch of intuitives sitting around talking about functions. And so for me, having an actual SE Dom come in and non-ironically use the word <laughs> to to dismiss a bunch of intuitives talking about ideas in the form of the person who generated that word to exemplify the behavior that the person is now exemplifying is a sort of intuitive cluster, cluster bomb of metamias that both ENFP and ENTP can enjoy because it doesn't have any logic to it. It's just intuitive you know it's just, it's just there yeah, yeah. yeah. how like for, for, i always found se really interesting for me i mean se is about doing stuff right but, but i think but 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 how 
I don't, I don't, I don't really get as e. I really have a hard time grasping it. I mean, I only know how like sensors respond to me, and they're always like, "Why do you keep talking about that stuff?" But for me, it's like, look, these are the different ways you could ma- like these are the different ways reality could manifest and in, in your hand to make it real. Like you could make reality. <laughs> as you. I mean, obviously, it's an EFI. I'm an analyst, so I think that's like maybe differentiation between meta analyst and analyst because I'm like, here are different ways reality could manifest for you, for you, you know? Right. And, but, but SE users are more like, I'm gonna just go do stuff. Well, well, here's the thing. From a meta analyst perspective, the most correct people of the four sets of people are the analysts because everything actually is a particular instance within a universal frame. That's how reality actually is. It's a bunch of particular instances within a universal frame. Oh, I have, okay. But, I have, you know, it's like, that doesn't mean that I, even though that's how reality is, it doesn't mean it's normatively preferable to me. It's just, it just isn't preferable that way to me. So I end up thinking of things as universal applications of universal frames. Uh, do, are you familiar with quantum quantum theory in any way, shape, or form? Do you know like the light exper- uh, experiment? Yeah, sure. And, and uh, yeah, like for example, like depending whether you observe or not, like light can have the properties of a wave or uh, a particle, right? Mm-hmm. And like the thought that occurred to me is that let's say like what we call experience or like the, yeah the human condition, whatever, is is essentially just like us behaving like particles or we we uh, that, that's why i think that maybe what we experience is like the experience of particle just like a set of photos and not like one giant wave we only see like well that's it, it, we can we can talk about it like this basically you've got your particle functions which are your metaphysical functions and, and they occur on an internal and external plane but your wave functions, which are your physical functions, they occur on the metaphys- uh, external and internal plane. So, um, SE experiences, SI stuff, it has duration. Um, whereas ideation, it has identity. So, like, these sentences were saying they have meanings, and the meanings can be understood. It may take as long as it takes for me to express them, but it how long it takes another person to understand them is a different question. And Mm -hmm. so in that sense, duration is subjective in the metaphysical plane, whereas duration is objective on the physical plane. And and that's what makes it more particle-like on the metaphysical plane and more wave-like on the physical plane. It's one of the things that makes it like that. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. That makes a lot of sense. I mean, yeah, <laughs> crazy stuff. Yeah, it's, uh, I think that, I wish that people in general, in the broader typology community, if I could get people to adopt any one notion that I've suggested, it's be starting to talk about functions as amount of time paid attention on one of these various or fields that can exist. Exactly, exactly. When I got into like MBTI, like a friend of an acquaintance of acquaintance of mine, INTP, like really, like really smart, really chaotic. But he essentially said the same thing. He said essentially it's just about like time spent like in a certain perceptive behave like behavioral manner. But <laughs> you know? so, like, ENFP spends like I don't know ninety percent in an E land or whatever, you know. Right. And um, um, if I spent okay. more of my time paying attention to how my body felt, I wouldn't be awake right now talking to you. I'd be back in bed, <laughs> like a sensible yeah. person. <laughs> I know, I know exactly what you're talking about. <laughs> it's just so easy to put aside my my physical state, as long as it's not too bad. I can, and I'm interested enough in what's going on in the external physical metaphysical plane where I'd rather play. I don't like playing down here in the internal physical plane. I like playing up here in the external metaphysical plane. Worst case scenario, I'd rather play here in the internal metaphysical plane. Or, yeah. or even 
fine, I'll do some shit out here in the physical plane. But this here, no, I, it's, <laughs> Uh, yeah, but I, I, I got to say, as much as uh, Dave's superpowers is under scrutiny, I really like his um, his um, how do you say it? his. I mean, he he, he essentially like in, in a lot of his videos, he sees like the types as like addicted to functions, you know. And I really like the way of looking at things, you know, as in like I'm addicted to ex, um, extroverted intuition, even if it's not like let's say 100% correct. I just like that metaphor. I mean, it does. So it does sense. give us. It does help to draw one's attention to the fact that one spends an exorbitant, ex, uh, a, a disproportionate amount of one's time attending by that fashion. So, typically, that's a, that's a corollary with addictive behaviors. Like, I spend a disproportionate amount of my time buying and smoking weed and cigarettes. Um, so that that's. Uh, in that sense, the corollary is accurate enough. The, the problem with using addiction as a corollary there is that addiction has a normative element that I don't think cognitive, cognitive function configuration does. In other words, if you truly are addicted to something, generally people think that means you ought to quit that thing or fix that. It's a problem that needs to be addressed or something. I don't think that way, but a lot of people do. Um, and it is the case that addiction has that kind of normative connotation to it. So that's the only thing I don't like about the addiction metaphor because um, it, it's like saying I'm addicted to being my right hand. You know, I, I'm not addicted to being right-handed. I am right-handed. It's, it's a habitual... It's how my identity... It's the shape my identity forms. Like a tree will go around like a pole or something and kind of like mush it in, into its body. Um, at that point, you don't say... Oh, the the tree is addicted to the pole. <laughs> the the pole is part of the tree at that point. Um, I mean, I can give you my personal like definition regarding addiction, and I there's no first. <laughs> um, I believe that, or like for me at least, addiction is something like that. If you do something because you want to, for me, it's not an addiction. But like for me, it implies that you have the ability to say no. You know, so that, that that for me is addiction. So if you smoke 100 joints a day, for me, I wouldn't consider it an addiction as long as you <laughs> truly and like wholeheartedly could say no and would follow through. But yeah, whatever. Um, okay, I have one personal question. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I mean, I told you I re I recently got a girlfriend and she's she's an ESFP. And I'm 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 a little bit scared. I mean, typology really got into my head, and like I looked up like socionics and intertype relation and whatever. And I mean, I I, <laughs> I already asked you, and you told me that eventually I would I would tell her like you're doing too much or whatever, or you're just doing shit. And she would tell me you're just like talking about shit. Like, <laughs> right. <laughs> Basically, you're. Um you're not focused on the right part of the process. The right part of the process is the one where we we really thoroughly discuss everything. And then mm -hmm. those discussions will eventually breed, produce the fruit of clarity on a given course of action, which we'll then do. You're doing everything backwards. You keep doing shit and then talking about it. No, we don't shoot first and ask questions later. <laughs> oh shit okay okay and she she's going to say the same thing about me but like in reverse yeah like, it'll be like look we are here to catch fish you keep wanting to adjust your line and put more sinkers on it and more floats on it and you have spent a total of two minutes out of the two hours we've been here with your line actually in the water. I'm actually trying to get us dinner. I've caught two fish. I would like to get a third so we both have enough to eat. I can for sure as fuck tell you, you're not going to catch any. You can't even play with your goddamn line. Okay. <laughs> that actually gave me a lot of insight into when I'm using, or like some instances where I use SE. I know a lot of times like when I'm, when I'm like, Let's say like I don't know, like it's taking too long. Like when I'm annoyed or something, I'm just like let, let's just do stuff, man. Let let's just let's just get going. Like what is happening here? That that's our our eighth slot SE when it kicks in at 
when it's, when it's subs, when it's serving any at the wrong time. It happens to me most frequently in traffic when I will make a sudden stupid decision to try an alternate route. <laughs> like I'm, stuck, I'm, I'm out on the freeway, the traffic's moving, but it's not moving very fast. I'm frustrated. I'm annoyed by it. I go, you know what? I'm gonna get off here. I bet I can just sort of go that way. I bet I can kind of cut through there, and I bet I can miss all this traffic. You know, four <laughs> hours later, I found my way back to the freeway. You know, fuck, yeah. Eric, why did you do that? <laughs> Damn, yeah, yeah, yeah. That happens a lot of times. That happens. Yeah, 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 yeah. I think I don't know. I think I think I use a lot of SE when I'm. Let's say like I'm going to like like a certain location for the first time. I think I'm using a lot of SE. I'm just like, okay, maybe 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 I should go this route. It it seems uh, shorter. And then a lot of times I just get lost or like I come like twenty minutes late. So I'm or I've already prepared myself and I usually come in advance. That's any hijack in our SE, basically. <laughs> That's the problem with, you know, being an any dom regarding your SE is basically SE is supposed to be, you know, it's supposed to fly to, to London on a regular basis. That's, it's what it does. It makes a daily trip from New York to London and back again, this airplane, SE. But if you, in the hands of an any dom, it it goes to London about once out of every hundred trips. <laughs> the other ninety nine times, it goes. You know, oh, today, I guess today we're going to Singapore. Today we're going to Australia. Today we're going to the Netherlands. You know. <laughs> At least we are following through. <laughs> well, well, that's the thing. We'll say to the INFPs and INTPs respectively. Well, at least we're going somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. True. But you're going to the wrong place. <laughs> like you're not going anywhere. And the SE Downs will go, why don't you just fucking go to London? <laughs> I mean, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh money. Oh man. Yeah, I gotta love I gotta love SE. Um, okay, but how would it be the other way around? So if you're like an ESFP or something and you have like how do they use N E for the sake of N E. No, wait, how do they use N E for the sake of S E? Yeah. Uh, so it's like uh Okay. So uh, it's like they're a, a a restaurant critic. And they keep writing reviews of the same restaurant. They go to different different examples of the same restaurant chain over and over again. And, and it's like the editor goes, no, you don't even get the point here. Being a restaurant critic means you have to go out and try different restaurants and review different restaurants every week. And so, you know, then the, the SE down will go and they'll go, okay, well then this time I'll go to the Denny's on the west side. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, hey, but but okay. So the an E, so apparently they they their an E only go only doesn't go big enough. Or how can I, you know? It, they they it only ideates as far as it needs to to enable them to do the action. Ah, uh, so so only within that an I framing as in okay. So I'm a I'm a I'm a, I don't know I'm a. Denny's, um, how do you say it, reviewer or something. So no, I'm just it, going. It, it's basically like saying, oh, okay, I got to go to a different restaurant. Okay, well, then I'll go to the other Denny's. <laughs> oh, damn. Oh, okay, okay, okay. So, <laughs> understand novelty as a valuable in and of itself. It's, it's just, you know, it's like I got to differentiate. Okay, I'll differentiate. Okay, but how you differentiate, whether you differentiate well or poorly matters too. Just like for us, you know, yeah, but whether you actually go to London matters too. <laughs> I don't care. We can go to Singapore, Eric. One day I'll do it. <laughs> I would never go to Singapore because the drug problems are too draconian. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. They're very, very, very strict on that. I mean, they got good internet and like beautiful cities, though. So, uh, 
Maybe if you, if you become like like a like a professional Twitch streamer and you need to stream in like 4K, Singapore is your domain. <laughs> Exactly. I'm also late for work, actually, but I didn't care. I just, I just, I just, I just like enjoying talking to you. <laughs> yeah, I, I'll do exactly that. I'll do exactly that. Nah, no, nah, it's not, it's not a, like I'm a tutor, so it's not as bad as a regular job if I come late. So there's a little bit of leeway. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Well, crack cocaine. <laughs> 